Hey everybody, Tim here with a review of James Bond, an actual James Bond movie review. Um, I know I've, I've done two parody reviews now, but we're finally actually to another Eon Productions. This time it's You Only Live Twice, which I always kind of make fun of this a little bit in the descriptions where I always say how it's Sean Connery's last role as James Bond because he had announced that this will be his final appearance and then he comes back for one more Eon Productions and then he does the the unofficial James Bond movie the Never Say Never Again but it's just kind of funny how at the time he was like nope this is it I'm done um, and it kind of makes sense because at this point like this is the fifth Eon Productions movie but we also just in this year alone which would be 1967 <clears throat> We had the OK Connery, so we have Sean Connery's own younger brother making a James Bond parody movie, and then we also have the Casino Royale parody movie. So 1967 alone, we got three movies all coming out. So I could see Sean Connery being like, you know what, no, I'm done. And supposedly this is the movie where like he was just hounded by the press and they were after him. And he started just doing interviews in like sweats and a t-shirt without the toupee. And they're like, that's not what James Bond looks like. And he's like, yeah, no shit. I'm not James Bond. I'm Sean Connery and I'm an actor and I like to dress comfortably. So I don't know. Like it's, I can, I can totally see his point of view. And I am glad he came back two more times, but it's really sad that he was kind of driven to that point. Um, as far as this movie goes, I I didn't really care for it that much. Like, it wasn't bad, but I didn't love it. So I think it was kind of funny how I loved the first movie and I loved the third movie. I didn't like the second and the fourth. So I was like, oh, there's, a, there's an even odd pattern going. Whereas this movie now breaks that pattern where I just don't... I thought it was really, really slow. Like, the first half... Like, it's all over the place. We see, like, spaceships getting swallowed by other spaceships. We see um, them going into the water, like, un not, not to the Thunderball extent, but, like, underwater scenes. Um, I don't quite understand the whole point of you only live twice. So I get it. Like, in the opening scene, we see Bond basically, like, getting shot, and he's killed. It's kind of a funny scene, actually, where the woman jumps out of bed, pushes the button, and it, like, closes, and then they shoot it. But then he has a burial at sea, and it turns out he fakes his death. And I get that they do that to kind of fit the title that you only live twice, but that whole scene, like, if you'd taken that whole thing out, like, you would have just trimmed the movie, and I feel like it would have been better. Like, I don't feel like it was a necessity to be in this movie. Um, but we see Miss Money Punny and the sub as well, so that was kind of cool. Um, I like some of the little, the, the plane crash scenes. Uh, Q, as always, is a great character, um, and he gives him, like, the, it's basically like a go-kart. Like, it's a funny little airplane. Um, we this, this movie's probably noteworthy for being the first time we actually see Blofeld, like, the face of him. And the character shows up about an hour and six minutes into the movie, so about halfway. And I would say, in my opinion, opinion like most people who have seen like Austin Powers know that it's Austin Powers is a parody on James Bond I would say this movie specifically is where a majority of those like parodies and jokes and stuff come from they, it comes from a lot of little things here and there but I would say this is that movie where like we see the piranhas in the water eating people and we see like i said we see blofeld and he's bald and he has the facial facial um like scar and stuff like that and uh let's see there's so much stuff going on in this movie um and oh the the hidden volcano lair like just stuff like that like a lot of it comes from this movie and that's totally fine like i'm totally down for it now for me i i realized donald pleasance has probably been around for a very very long time at this point i did look up his filmography and nothing super jumped out at me uh he finally did halloween about 10 years after this movie came out but he was a, an established actor at this point so it was kind of cool to see him as a role other than his Halloween role that I feel like I know him more from because he's like he's done more movies than anybody else in Halloween until now with Jamie Lee Curtis doing the reruns but um 
it was kind of cool to kind of see him pop up in this character. Um, the second half of this movie, I feel like, was a little bit more interesting than the first half, where we see Bond basically becoming Japanese, and he's, like, learning the way of life, he's, like, he changes his hairstyle, he gets married, quote-unquote, which is kind of funny because that's another plot point in the next movie about him getting married. Uh, finally, we go to Blofeld's hidden volcano lair, and we actually finally see Blofeld about an hour and, like, 40 minutes into the movie so almost the end and we finally see him and to be honest with you like it was a little bit disappointing like I like Donald Pleasance I like the whole character of Blofeld but just to see him like he's always been like very calm very in control and very like sure of himself um like especially him like petting the cat and everything very Dr. Claw like which is where Dr. Claw comes from um, but once we actually get to Donald Pleasance and seeing Blofeld's face and his whole body, he's just like rubbing this cat and he's just, he's a little more manic than I would have liked the character to be. Um, but overall, like we finally get to the end and it's of course Bond like having his honeymoon with his Japanese bride in the, the lifeboat. Overall, like I would say it's an okay movie. I wouldn't say it's my favorite. I de or I definitely wouldn't say it's my favorite, but I wouldn't say it's my least favorite. Like I said, I really like two of them and I really did not like two of them. So this would perfectly fit right there in the middle of the five movies. It's it's definitely the middle movie. So for those who have seen this one, what did you think about Sean Connery saying he was going to retire? What did you think about the, the spaceships? And what did you think about the hidden volcano lair? What did you think about Donald Pleasance's role as... Uh, uh, Blofeld, go ahead, let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys for everything, and I will see you guys next time for the George Laserby uh, debut and his only solo movie as James Bond on Her Majesty's Secret Service.